What is going on, everybody? My name is Pete, and you guys are watching Paid to Drive and Pay to Drive Vlogs. Hope you guys are doing fantastic out there. If you drive for apps like Grubhub, DoorDash, Uber Eats, or any of the others, you, my friends, are in the right place to stay up to date with what's going on in the gig economy. So get started right now for free. Hit that red subscribe button down below. Turn on all notifications so you're always notified whenever I post something new. And if you wouldn't mind, hit that like button down below. Just lets YouTube know I'm doing a good job. In fact, leave a comment right now saying liked just so I know you did it. And let's jump into it. All right, drivers and dashers out there. We got another one for you coming from Michael once again. And he goes, hi, Pete, it's Mike. And as always, you can use my name. I was working on DoorDash the other day and I got an order for edible arrangements for $17 for six miles. So great money. And let me just pause for a second. I had no idea that edible arrangements is now on DoorDash because anytime I've ever used edible arrangements as the customer uh, or the person receiving edible arrangements, uh, it was always through them directly. So this is interesting to know that. So uh, he says, I get to the house and it says it's a hand it to me. So I look at the additional notes and it says, leave it at my door. I proceeded to call the customer stating I had to hand it to them due to the fact it's how the order was put in. Unfortunately, the number connected me to edible arrangements who also told me to leave it at their door. But knowing the history of fraud, I called the customer service or I called customer service and spent 30 minutes on the phone rectifying the situation. Why don't customers put orders in correctly? Or do you think this could be an issue of attempting fraud? Thank you and keep up the good work. So, Mike, you know, honestly, it, it, it really could be either one because the fraud has gotten so bad lately that I wouldn't put it past anybody uh, that that's what they're doing. OK, it really has gotten to that point where customers are taking advantage so much. It's totally possible. But um the fact that it had both like leave it at the door and hand it to me at the same time, because in the DoorDash app by default, I think it still stays on the customer end as uh, leave it at the door. So sometimes it can have both options on there if they leave a note or whatever. So it contradicts its, you know, itself. So what I want to know is, did you just end up leaving it at the door? Because I feel like you left us on a cliffhanger here because you said, unfortunately, the number connected me to edible arrangements who also told me to leave it at their door. But knowing the history of fraud, I called the customer. I called. I don't know why I keep saying called the customer, called customer service and spent 30 minutes on the phone rectifying the situation during that 30 minutes on the phone. Were you actually able to get in contact with the customer? That's what I want to know. And what did you end up doing? Did you end up just leaving it at the door? Because, again, edible arrangements are pretty expensive, you know, to, to order. So that's definitely, that's definitely something I could see someone committing fraud with because they don't feel like paying for a big arrangement like that. But the fact that you got $17 for six miles is fantastic because you almost got like $3 per mile on that, which is really, really good. And like I've said in the past, you always want to try and aim for a minimum, a dollar per mile. But some people go higher than that. They say, I'm, I'm not taking anything under $2 a mile. So yes, uh, I, I think he handled it very well, Mike. Uh, and the fact that, you know, you decided to contact customer service instead of just kind of, you know, put, you know, taking it in your own hands, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Um, so I hope this is a, a big eye opener to everybody out there watching, because this is a very real situation, you know, where customers could possibly possibly take advantage of you and get you deactivated because of, of you know, how it says, you know, leave it at the door. And also on top of that, it, uh, it says to hand it to the customer, which literally contradicts itself. So this is one of those just really, really frustrating situations where it's like, you don't know what to do. And like, I've always said, cover yourself, CYA, cover your ass because DoorDash, DoorDash is not going to do it. The customer sure as hell isn't going to watch out for you. So always call customer service, have them put a note on your account that you called. This is what I do with Grubhub. Anytime I ever have an issue. 
contact DoorDash, tell them to put a note, say, I don't know what to do in this situation. And, you know, don't don't try and handle it by yourself because that's the last thing you want to do. So drivers, dashers, what would you have done in this particular situation? Let me know down below in the comment section. And um, how, how would you have handled this? And do you think Mike handled it well? I want to hear from you. And of course, if you ever have anything you want to share with me, a comment, a question, a topic, a story, an article, whatever it is, be sure to send it to me at paid to drive stories at gmail.com. Also, for a quicker response, you guys can always reach out and message me through Patreon at patreon.com forward slash paid to drive. That link is in the description down below or in the pin top comment. And anyone who signs up as a patron, as my way of saying thank you, is I give you guys shout outs in all my new videos. And as you can see, there are all the names right here on your screen of our current patrons as of the current moment of this video being made. So huge shout outs to all of them. If you guys want to sign up, links are down below. As I mentioned, who's going to be the next patron? Maybe it will be you. And of course, I hope every single one of you out there is saving lots of money on your gas using the free gas app called Get Upside. The link is in the description down below. Just scroll down this page and click on the link that says Get the Free Gas app. It's very simple to use. It'll tell you how to install it on whatever kind of phone, tablet, or device that you have. And then from that point, all you got to do is go to your gas station, pump your gas, print out your receipt, take a picture of your receipt with the Get Upside Gas app, and within 48 hours or so, you'll get anywhere from 15 cents to 45 cents a gallon back, which is pretty fantastic. And if a friend or family member signs up using your code, you'll get paid every time they pump gas. It's called Get Upside. Links in the description down below. Make sure to download it today. And finally, for all your t-shirts, hoodies, and goodies, visit paidtodrivestore.com. That link is in the description and you guessed it, the pin top comment down below. We've got lots of great new designs, colors, sizes, you name it. We probably have it on sale every day at paidtodrivestore.com. That link is in the description down below. And the pin top comment. And of course, if you made it to the end of this video, I'm extremely grateful for all of you. Let me know by leaving a comment in the chat or the comment section below saying end 100, E-N-D 100. Just lets me know you did it. Don't forget to hit that red subscribe button down below and turn on all notifications so you're always notified whenever I post something new. And if you wouldn't mind it, hit that like button down below. Just lets me know you enjoyed the video and it lets YouTube know that I'm doing a good job. In fact, leave a comment right now saying liked L-I-K-E-D just so I know you did it. And until next time, get that money, get that honey. Keep hustling and keep bustling. And we'll see you next time right here on Paid to Drive and Paid to Drive Logs. And as always, drive safe, be well, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace.